Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com. This tutorial will look at using the Team Planner view in Microsoft Project 2010 and 2013. Now the Team Planner view was introduced with 2010 and it was introduced to help people manage their resources. It is a view that is meant to be the kind of resource view uh, well, like the Gantt chart but for resources. So resource names will be featured in rows and the tasks will be against the time scale just like they are in the Gantt chart already in front of us. So it's easy for us to relate to and very easy to make changes. Now to get into this team planner we can click the view tab on the ribbon and go straight into the team planner, the biggest button in this resource views group which gives you an indication of just what Microsoft think of it when they, they brought it out. That this is meant to be the main view and, and probably the easiest way of working with your resources now. Um, it certainly looks good. This is it. We've got our resource names in rows just like tasks are in the Gantt chart and in a very similar way we can see the bars of the tasks against the time scale. At the bottom we can see a section for unassigned tasks and I can see that all my tasks have been assigned. There are none in there. I can also see that Sarah Donahue is over allocated because um, her name is in red just like it would be in any resource view. And I can see that that over allocation is on the 17th of June due to the red bars around the tasks. So this is a fantastic view for seeing who does what and when. Now it's, it's probably the best example of how we can find this out. Now what we're looking at doing is how we can deal with problems as well. And we have a problem here with Sarah Donahue um, having too much of a workload. Now the great thing or another great thing about this team planner is you can make changes to it just like you can in Outlook. Um, if you're familiar with, with Outlook and that's what you use as your kind of email editor. And what I mean by that is when we use things like the calendar, um, you can just drag appointments between dates and you can do a similar thing here. So I can see that you know the problem is a conflict between write manual, let's get rid of that, and uh, train users. I can see that problem illustrated with these red bars. And to solve it, I can just move train users out and assign it to another another resource. So I could drag train users into Sally Johnson, who's, who seems to be available, and that would clear it up. It is as easy as that. I can see the workload of my resources and I know who is available and I can simply just drag through and that is the, you know, the quickest and best way of doing it probably. Now if you use project and use resources now you probably have your own way of doing this and there are many ways that we can achieve it and this is another one uh, to your collection really. One thing we should, probably should be careful of if we are going to use the team planner is that if you are using auto schedule tasks, this you know the click and drag approach maybe isn't the best for you. Now this view is fantastic at seeing who does what and when, but if I do drag that task, I am still moving it. If I do move it to a different time, so that is still going to set a constraint in my project. So you might want to look at an alternative way, such as reducing the resource hours or increasing the the work on the task or something like that to combat it as well. If you're unsure what I mean here, check out some tutorials on effort driven scheduling and, and task types uh, to find out more. If you're using manually scheduled then it's absolutely fine because you're going to be fixing dates yourself anyway. Um, but yeah, if auto scheduled, just bear that in mind, just still be using it. But it is a fantastic tool no matter how you are scheduling. We do have a, a format tab under Team Planner tools at the top as well. A few extras in here, such as text lines for some formatting. Now, how large do you want your rows? Can make these rows bigger if I need to. And we've got things like these check boxes to show in hide areas. I could hide the unassigned tasks. And if I've got a lot more resources, it's taking up room that I, you know, it may be handy for me to have. And we've got some kind of format in here to change the colour of bars as well. So there is extras there for you to explore. But they're not some bolts to be able to see who's doing what, uh, when they're doing it and be able to deal with problems. 
and conflicts. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, please check out more at computergargar.com.